One of my favorite things about the song Date Night is the first lyric is just Date Night. <laughs> Not in that accent, <laughs> yeah. but I just love the simplicity of that. <laughs> like all your up. songs, you're just like, let it be. <laughs> just start your song. <laughs> yeah. Imagine showing up to a date. <laughs> you go up to her door and you knock on the door and she opens it and you're just like, Date Night. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Lyric Boys. I'm Lucian Flores, and with me is my friend Andrew Stieglitz. What's up? In every episode, we take one of our favorite bands and we pick the 10 most ridiculous, funniest, craziest lyrics that they have, and we talk about it. It's literally that simple. This is a very simple podcast, but it's a great podcast. In this episode, we're talking about idols. Who's excited? Uh, I am excited. Idols is a, a punk rock band. Yeah, I can give you I can give you the full Idols experience. I do. You you introduced me to this band actually. Uh, I had heard of them before, but I didn't realize they were fairly new. And you brought them into my world. So you want to talk a little bit about? Yeah. Idols. So Idols is a British very. British band, like the most British modern band that I could possibly imagine. And they dropped their debut album, Brutalism, in 2017. Then they followed it up a year later with Joy as an act of resistance. What a what a title. And so they've got a new album coming out in September. So get excited. And Wikipedia, my favorite website, calls them a punk rock slash post-punk band. But the lead singer, Joe Talbot, says he hates the label of punk band. So I honestly really? don't know what to call them because that's like my he, go-to. What he described them. First of all, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. I feel like if you were to call them anything, like even something that in his mind he would resonate with, automatically he'd be like, no, I fucking hate that shit. Exactly. And so Idols, I think that, that, that I fucking hate that shit permeates their first album and their second album was i hate that shit but i love that shit too so they're very but catchy yeah they're very aggressive sounding and every song is a banger and their songs are concise their lyrics are succinct and they sing about self-love the collective power of social movements they sing about hating tories which are like the uk's republicans they hate racists they hate homophobes they hate toxic men and when I listen to idols, I want to like run through a wall, change the world and bash the haters. Yeah. I want to yeah. go to like a dive pub in London. Yeah. And jump dive around pub. with some British <laughs> dudes and like have a beer in my hand and like slosh it everywhere. You know what I mean? Dive pub. Yeah. What is that even a term? I wonder. Uh, we could make the first dive pub. Yeah. And, and so one thing is like, they have a lot of fun lyrics, but they like their lyrics are great. This podcast is more about pointing out the absurd, but Joe Talbot's voice is amazing. And he's like, his, his accent is just like, my mother worked 15 hours, five days a week. And I'm like, I can't do that, but it's, it rules. Let me tell you something about that accent. If you want the one to I just did people to, to the accent of the singer of idols. Yes. What you just did would be the opposite of what okay. I would want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what would I do? You do it. You, I'm not going to, like, I can't. Okay. So <laughs> let's, let's <laughs> jump into it then. Andrew, now yeah, that we up? are members of the podcasting community, I've been looking around. I've been listening to other podcasts. I'm trying to listen to some and see if any of them strike my fancy. And Has baby, any of them, ha- have, have you found anything? I found a Tell podcast called Kick the Jukebox, hosted by Kyle and Louie. And they are two smart cookies. This is about the experience and the thrill you get when you kick a freshly painted jukebox. Listening to Kick the Jukebox made me think of that. But it also made me think, wow, some people out there in this world are incredibly smart when it comes to music and have really varied music taste and know lots of cool records and damn i want to know these records so this this whole this whole podcast basically it's it's about mainly 20th century music and each each 
episode is like a deep dive into a new album. So like I was listening to the McCartney 2 episode because that is just for a Paul McCartney album, that's so strange. It's so different than like what we anticipate from him. But there's like episodes about the cars and Sign the Family Stone, Sinatra, like Beastie Boys, just like 20th century music, baby. And I know that they're coming out with a whole season in December dedicated to disco music, deep dives into oh, disco albums. Very cool. Yeah. I like, I, I'm excited to hear that because disco music, it always gets that bad rap, but I feel like these guys are going to have, have a fresh take on it. Yeah. I feel like it's, it was a thing for rock people to be like, disco sucks, but hey, this is the 21st yeah. century. Disco slaps. And slaps, so yeah. audience at home, content hounds, lyric boys, stands. We permit you to spread your wings and listen to other podcasts. You can do it. And if you want to find Kick the Jukebox, just find him wherever you listen to your podcasts. Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, whatever Stitcher is, you can listen there. Anchor.fm, whatever that is. Yeah. So that's Kick the Jukebox with our friends Kyle and Chloe. If you're listening to this episode and want more Idols action, their latest record, Ultra Mono, is out now. And check out I'm Scum, an Idols cast, which is a podcast all about idols. I was listening to it earlier, and it's really cool. It's these two super fans going into deep dives. They even did an interview with the man himself, Joe Talbot. Be sure to subscribe and tell them we sent you. Once again, that's I'm Scum, an Idols cast, wherever you get podcasts. Uh, my first lyric is from the song television mm. and it's if someone talked to you the way you do to you i'd put their teeth through love yourself and you know you read something oh i was just gonna say that in all of their aggressive i love aggressive music with super positive messages yes exactly because aggressive music to me i i am and w this will come out throughout doing the podcast more but i am like a metalhead i'm i'm like a punk like hardcore fan i've been since high school like hardcore was my thing and uh i it gets me happy it gets me excited mm -hmm. to hear super aggressive music so when you have positive lyrics and super aggressive music it's just like i want to fucking jump out a window for joy break my head through glass and happiness exactly and, and so what this lyric i think is like idols is especially like i think now super positive and like we're gonna make people love themselves and this lyric especially is that because there's all the violence that's like basically if someone were to talk about themselves the way that you talked about yourself i'd literally like beat their head in right that's what this lyric is and that's great i love that like that is like self-love to a violent level and because if you think of it like another way you would do this lyric is like, if like, it's basically like if you were to, we released this podcast episode and after this you were like, well, I didn't really like that. I'd be like, listen, if anyone in the world said that to you, I'd kill them. And you'd be like, wow, okay. Imagine going up to somebody and punching them in the face <laughs> and they were like, what the fuck was that for? And you're like, Bro, you were talking shit about yourself. I had to knock you out. Remember, oh, thanks. you've always been there for yourself and you'll always be there for yourself. So respect yourself and don't ever let harmful words come into your brain. You are the best version of you that there will ever be. And if you can't see that now, I'll fucking break your teeth. Exactly. So I, I did look at some YouTube comments for this. And I was struck by love, one thing. I love this. This is one of my favorite things now is the YouTube, YouTube comments. So I, I was struck by the fact that these could be YouTube comments for like an Idols video, but they could also be YouTube comments on a lecture from the Dalai Lama. <laughs> okay. So one is aggressive positivity. I love it. I love me. I love you all. Another one is 2020 is the year I said I'd love myself and finally make peace with the things that I cannot change about myself. This is exactly what I needed this time around. Really need to learn how to love myself better. Great, great song. So positive, but my favorite one is my bus driver recommended this to me after an enlightening conversation about the brutality of humanity. And now I'm hooked. 
Dude, I, I cannot think of a better metaphor for idols than like a working class professional, mm-hmm. working class <laughs> physician talking about like philosophy mm-hmm. and talking about like overthrowing the government. Not that they were talking about that, but this, that, that's amazing. They were talking about the brutality of humanity. Brilliant. Which, oh, all right. That's, that's my number one. You got, you got a lyric? My lyric is, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I got a, <laughs> so it's from a song called Date Night. And I'm reading it now and I'm like trying to hear it in my head. But I wrote, sat in a taxi all clad in black and I, na, na, na. I say, and so the na 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 in in parentheses here, I put proceeds to have heart attack mm. because he just goes like sat in a taxi all clad in black, and I na 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 na. And I love that because I think that the song is about being anxious on a date night, or like being anxious around like a date or somebody who you're dating, and he's sitting in a taxi like having a panic attack in the back seat, and it sounds like it have you been there have you have you had a panic attack on date night before uh panic attack to that extent no but certainly anxious i mean certain Mm. like i'm never uh good at that (laughs) i'm happy i don't have to do it anymore so you know you're no longer anxious on dates now that you're in a long-term relationship the anxiety is and i can say the anxiety (laughs) has gone down a little bit so you're uh, you're going from like ten na 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 nas to like one na na na, just a na, a yeah, solid so third. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I love the way he says that though, because the visual, like I'm literally picturing him, like seizing in the back of a taxi <laughs> and the date just being like, um, should I go? I think that's one of Idols' talents is just aggression in in just like word vomit that sounds amazing. At times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the word of vomit, it just, man, and his accent, mm-hmm. everything about the way he, he kind of speaks like a panic attack feels. I yeah. Think. Just staccato and Oof. in bursts of energy and like very jittery and mm-hmm. like, uh, like he, his doctor is probably telling him like, you shouldn't keep doing this for a career. Then he'll be like, mate, I don't want to fucking hear that. I don't like that label. One of my favorite things about the song Date Night is the first lyric is just, Date Night! <laughs> Not in that accent, but I just love the simplicity of that. Like, all your songs, you're just like, let it be! <laughs> just start your song. <laughs> yeah. you. Up to it, you go up to her door and you knock on the door and you're just like, Date Night! Oh, that's a much better accent than, than, than mine. This is why you're the talent. Yep. And anyway, so my second lyric is from Never Fight a Man with a Perm, which... Oh, I Hold on. I think I have... Yeah. I have you have a lyric from it? From the, I, I think I have we're, a lot of lyrics from it. There's that whole... This is the problem with this podcast. We're all discussing 10 lyrics, but... There's too many good ones. There's too many. But I picked one from Never Fed a Man with a Perm. There's so much good in it. I picked one thing. Mm -hmm. And I just think that this lyric is the sickest takedown of like anyone I've ever heard. Ooh, I think I have this one. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. It probably is. So it's me, oh me, oh my, Roy. You look like a walking thyroid. You're not a man. You're a gland. (laughs) You're one big neck with sausage hands that is fucking chef's kiss it's brutal it's yeah. brutal <laughs> i have never heard anyone describe someone as a thyroid and every line is brutal a thyroid a gland a neck with sausage hands yeah and yeah the thing is like you can say so many ways to there are so many ways to say fuck you to somebody yes. i don't like you. yes this way is a like you can make a person cry yes 
This is su- <laughs> such a fucking amazing takedown. It's it's a poetic, and this is one of the things I'm jealous of. Like good lyricists mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is when they can be poetically brutal. The way re- Idols is. This reminds me of like in a teen movie when like one teen will say an insult that just eviscerates another teen and you're just like there's no way any teenager came up with that in the moment it's like and it's like 45 year old guys for <laughs> hours sitting in a writer's room that same thing with sitcoms when yeah. there's a sitcom and the guy walks up to a girl in a bar and has the perfect pickup line and it's like that didn't just like fly off the dome that is the product of weeks of writing rough draft after rough draft it's always like there's a kid getting bullied. Then like this other new kid sees that and steps in and is like, Hey, listen, bully, you are a walking thyroid. You're not a man. You're a gland. You're one big neck with sausage hands. It <laughs> says bu- it all in one <laughs> swoop, run on sentence. And the guy's like, where did that come from? He's like, I don't know. It just, it just came out of me. The bully would just shatter. It- <laughs> yeah. I- Has anybody been told something this brutal in real life? I feel like they haven't because in order to have been told something this brutal, like, like we're talking about, you need to have to sit down and write it. You can't just mm-hmm. think it off the top of your head. Yeah. No, if this were, if this song were on top of your head to be like, Mio, Mio, my Roy, you're dumb. Yeah. That's it. This, this is also like not this, this character in, in, in this thing that I'm imagining, this is like one of those tropes that you always see in movies where it's just like, you know, the amazing insult. But the other thing about this, it's always the writers who write these scenarios where like the nerd sticks up to the bullies by insulting them. And you know, there's so much like backstory there that the writers were like, they've had interactions with bullies in the past. And it's just like, for 27 years, (laughs) I've been thinking about you, Roy. You beat me up back in Sunday school. And now I write for a sitcom. And guess what? The main character's son is going to eviscerate a bully on this episode. So who's laughing now? Yeah, and Roy's like, uh, okay. Stieglitz, do you have a lyric from Never Fight a Man with a Perm as well? Yeah, so that I picked that one. And then I mm-hmm. also picked, I mean, this whole song is chock full of them. Yes. I also picked uh, Brill Cream Creatine and a Bag of Charlie Sheen. And then mm-hmm. he says, A Heathen from Eaton and a Bag of Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I always find these lyrics. I'm um, I'm discovering a pattern here where yes. it's like, what the fuck are they talking about? Kind of lyrics, less like, mm-hmm. less of like a, a fun conversation point, and more of a just like, what what is a bag of Charlie Sheen? What is a bag? Of I think Michael it's like Keaton? cocaine. What is a bag I, of Michael? Did Michael Keaton do coke? I think it's like a movie character thing, but I think Charlie Sheen's definitely coke. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But uh, a heathen Thank from... You. Thank you for that education. I'll see you later. A heathen from Eaton is like one of those classic idols lines that I love so much. If you don't know, Eaton is one of those classic private schools in the UK. I think it's an all-boy private school that like so many of the politicians and things go to. There's like Eaton and there's... Um, I'm forgetting the names of the other ones. But the like, British ruling class like all goes to Eaton. So this is also insulting a classic idols thing, punching up at this like private school privileged boy. Uh huh. So it's great. And a bag of Michael Keaton. Oh, maybe that's just money. Then. Well, maybe it is money. Did, there's there's so many good lyrics in this song. I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm jealous of the way that he can like, like we're saying, like attack people with words. Just like calling somebody a thyroid, a gland, a big neck with sausage hands. Oh. I could never in a million years, as angry as I have been at some people at, at points in my life, I could never think of something so poetic like that. I also, after recently having my run-in where I got lightly mauled by two dogs, <laughs> um, the idea of being a big neck with sausage hands does not seem appealing. I'm already now like, huh, maybe I should carry dog treats around with me. But if I were to, I'm, I guess I'm already a delicious snack to dogs. The idea of having sausage hands just adds to like, oof. Also, if you were a big neck, you couldn't run away from the dogs. Because yeah. Because you'd just be a fat, rolling neck. Damn. 
So is that your, you, we consider that your second lyric? Is it back to me now for lyric number sure, three? Sure, throw it back. All right. Mine is from the song Love Song. Oh, oh, I got one from here too. God damn. We get well, some back. They only have two albums. So. That's true. But if we got repeats, I have some backup ones too. So mine is You Give Me Power. You Give Me Power. You're like a gun or a knife. Be my wife. Great. I'm just thinking like, imagine that wedding vow. Like everyone is turned out for this wedding and they're like, the groom's going to make a speech now. Or like when the bats to put the rings on or whatever, however weddings work, I, I don't believe in love. Um, and the groom is simply like, you are a gun, you are a knife, be my wife. And everyone's just like, whoa, <laughs> poetic, man. But... <laughs> It's also like there's so many love songs in this world. I've never heard love described or like this, the bond between people being described as like powerful, as powerful as a gun or a knife. And I think that's kind of cool. I do like that. I feel like if somebody told me I was like a gun or a knife in relation to like loving, I would be like, okay, maybe I'm not giving off the right vibes. Maybe I need to change okay. something about myself. Like I wouldn't think, I wouldn't really take that as like, oh, that's a good thing. Hypothetical would you, would question you think here. That's a good thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I feel like in some way it's like dismissing the idea of like needing a gun or a knife, like needing power through that, needing to feel bigger than yourself with like violence because love can make you feel bigger than that that's too much analysis let's get in the fun zone for a second let's get yeah give me let's get back to the fun zone the hypothetical remember at some point in the past we did a red hot chili peppers episode oh god and there is there is the lyric she magic sex magic or there's this version of you give me power you're like a gunner knife be my wife if you were the the like object of the lead singer's affection what would you rather the lyric about you be? Say the idols one again. You give me power, you give me power. You're like a gun or a knife. Be my wife. Mm, sex magic. Yeah. I just want that magic cock. I want... <laughs> <laughs> every, every, every episode has just me going, Jesus Christ. <laughs> to you being like... I like shocking you. I, I think shocking <laughs> you is so fun. Because like I could say things that, that are just like off the cuff it doesn't really matter and it's it makes me laugh to hear your reaction no but like okay sex magic i want to know that i am magical when it comes to fucking okay i don't want to okay. be a guy who <laughs> empowers you no i'm just Jesus. kidding I'm okay just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no i <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I and we are moving on <laughs> i like i i think that uh both are good both are good both are good both i would take both you'd want a she magic sex magic in the sheets the and a be my gun be my wife on in the streets yes <laughs> well the thing is that you <laughs> when i posed the hypothetical to you like let's say yes. you're in a loving relationship yes. and somebody wrote a song about you and it was blood sugar sex magic yes you a, a year-long relationship you told me you would consider leaving the relationship <laughs> because of that song that's absurd to me i think that that's a good dis i i don't think that that's a bad like love song in terms of like a, being sexy like a sexy love song I would rather Love Song by Idols be written about me. Yeah, well, clearly, because you wanted to leave a... You wanted to break up with the woman of your <laughs> dreams because she wrote a song about you and the lyrics were sex magic. Yes. Um, Stieglitz, you have a, you have a different... don't understand. <laughs> you have a different lyric from Love Song or is that the one you had? Uh, I do have a different lyric from Love Song. It's, uh, it's two lyrics... Mm -hmm. from different parts of the song the first one is i carried the watermelon i want to be vulnerable and then the <laughs> second one is look at the card i bought it says i love you so mm. i kind of like the second one the best because yes we're talking about how this is a like poetic empowering love song but this line look at the card i bought it says i love you almost seems a little 
like accusatory. Maybe that's not the right word. It, it more like a, you don't think I love you, but look yeah, at the yeah, card exactly. I bought. It exactly. says I love you. And it also says happy birthday. Yeah, it's like paranoid. It's like, wait, you don't think I love you? Look at the look at the card. I bought you. The card says I love you. I was like, chill. You just told me that I'm a gun and a knife. Like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and being vulnerable, carrying a watermelon. Who can't relate to that? Yeah. Uh, again, another one of those lines where I'm just like, what is, I, is, is watermelon a metaphor? For, get, get, this podcast can also teach me about metaphors. Maybe I didn't learn <laughs> enough in high school English. Can you teach well, me? Well, I, I, I got a question for you. What's, what's the furthest you've ever brought a watermelon from point A to point B? Uh, good question. Great question, uh, I would say. Probably from my mom's car mm -hmm. to my house. Did you feel vulnerable? I felt vulnerable not because of the watermelon, but because yeah. uh, I was helping my mom in with the groceries, and <laughs> I could never do that fast enough. Why? She just wants you to hurry up? She's like, Andrew, bag it. Bag it faster. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been grocery shopping with your mom? Have I ever been grocery shopping with my mom? Let me think about that Let me question. Tell you something about <laughs> The exclusive cutting edge content you're getting from this podcast. Okay? <laughs> well, you see, I do. Yeah, I have been grocery shopping with my mom once or twice before. <laughs> it is fine. It's Let fine. Let me tell you something. If you're yes. listening to this right yes. now and you're not fucking as hard as Anthony Kiedis is all of the time, there's a problem because this is the most exciting thing you've ever heard. If you've ever been grocery shopping with your mom, please tweet at us and uh, we will retweet. So anyway, That's to the answer- most fucked up thing you've done with a watermelon. So to answer the distances, I have brought watermelon from the Upper West Side to Bushwick on an L train, on a train. I felt very vulnerable. Then I brought it to the party and we didn't even open it up. Oh, so wow. sad, all for nothing. You brought a watermelon from the Upper West Side to Bushwick. You're aware that in Bushwick, they sell watermelons, right? I am not aware of that now. Yes. Yeah, so most places, definitely in New York City, I would say, uh, most stores sell fruit. Hmm. Uh, for future reference, I would say consider buying a watermelon more closer to the locale where you're at. This is Andrew Stieglitz, everyone. Expert on two things, watermelon and just sex. Why did you do sex Sexpert. I wanted to bring it to my cousin's party. Why, why, and, 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 why wouldn't you buy a watermelon there? I don't know. Price point. It was... I would do it again. In, in Bushwick, I would think, too. I, I would do it again. Okay? I regret nothing. I've listened to enough idols to know to regret nothing and to not want to change the past. I do not... I love myself. All right. Let me hear. So, give me a lyric. I got a lyric from you, for you, <laughs> excuse me, from the song Stendhal Syndrome. And. Oh, I have a, I have from this song too. What? How do we, the, we, know. how do we have lyrics? This is bad. I have a couple backups also. All right. Good, good, good. I so. I more than five. So. My there's a bunch of lyrics in the song, but one that I like is Did you see that selfie? What Francis Bacon did? Don't look nothing like him. What a fucking div. <laughs> I have a very I have the first verse of that yeah. same lyric. So so this song is just basically like some dude looking at all these famous British artists and being like, their art sucks. I don't like kid could have done that. But this is like this lyric is the peak quintessential Britishness thing. First of all, what Francis Bacon did, the way like the British vernacular, the I British know, mind, I love, I love it. Yeah. That selfie, what Francis Bacon did. Who talks like that? Yeah. British people, apparently. Well, what Francis Bacon did. <laughs> yeah, you should just do this line in that accent. Right. I'm so fucking. Did you see that painting, what Rothko did? <laughs> he says that. That's, that's mine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Uh, you know what? Here's the thing, too. Yeah. Have you ever been? I'm sure the answer is yes. But can you talk about a time when you've been in like an art museum and you've seen a painting that's supposed to be like this perfect piece of art, and you're just mm -hmm. like, I, I don't get it. What? What is the big fucking deal? Well, 
Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot. We're, we're, oh, baby, listeners at home, get ready. So let's just talk about the title for a second, Stendhal syndrome, and this will come back to it. But Stendhal sh- syndrome is apparently when you look at like a, a piece of beautiful art and you might faint, you might hallucinate, you might have rapid heartbreak, heartbeats. And it's also known as Florence syndrome because all of the Renaissance art in Florence. Now, my hot take is that I much prefer a abstract expressionist painting over a Renaissance painting. Mm. And I feel like that's the opposite. Like so many times I'll go to the museum and look at like an abstract expressionist painting and people will be like, oh, what, what a fucking div. Like who did this? How is this art? This is like, like I love my boy Cy, Cy Twombly. And the first couple of times I saw his paintings, I remember being like, what is this? This is just like a ton of scribbles and gibberish on a canvas. And then eventually I was like, wait a minute. Mm. I feel something. I feel something in a way that I don't feel looking at perfect Renaissance art. Really? That's, yeah. that's interesting because, all right, so I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at some abstract expressionism and I see mm-hmm. Rothko is an abstract mm-hmm. expressionist artist. Uh, I definitely understand where Idols is coming from. Yeah. Um, so what, like, what do you feel when you look at those paintings? emotions i feel like a mood i i i i can't just quite describe it it depends on the painting but i'll just look at it and instantly it will hit me or i'll feel like a wave of just like something something and i'll i don't know what it is but it's just like i i feel this realness in a way i don't feel when i look at like a really perfect piece now oh okay so like jackson pollock i'm looking at that now. yeah uh what's also funny is calling it a selfie like basically this is like two this is like us going to a museum and just like shitting on all the modern art and being like you know like calling the self-portrait a selfie is hilarious also yeah. francis bacon made like the most graphic self-portraits like he kind of looks like the nazis at the end of indiana jones with their face melting like that's kind of like his style mm-hmm. so just being like oh that looks nothing like him like move on it, it's just like the most like philistine like not understanding art and as a fan of modern art i'm just like this is like so many times people will be like why do you like this lucian i'm like why do i have to like stand up for this thing why do like why can't you be the one defending like oh why do you love the like mona lisa I, you know it's just we all have preferences and and taste that's a a good take now i'm looking at the uh francis bacon Mm self-portrait and this looks nothing like a jackson pollock for example like this this i can this is like to me i feel more looking at this than i did looking at jackson pollock or rothko Mm -hmm. because this is like i feel like he's, he's saying something with this he's saying something about how his his appearance and how he feels inside and how it is he's just saying a lot more than like a bunch of scribbles on paper which is how i kind of see the abstract expressions based on a very quick google search but if maybe you are the subject you're like one of the subjects of the song to just be like well rothko just did like his paintings are just like a couple colors like it's a gradient i can do that in two seconds on photoshop well if this podcast is also a clue to anything it's the fact that a quick google search means that we're all experts don't ever question my expertise on the subject of music and music lyrics i spent two years as the music editor of a college newspaper that means i am something and i am someone worth respecting okay get that through your thick fucking skull you walking gland with your sausage hands okay thank you wow all right do you feel better i'm i feel i feel self-love you so you got you so you pick a pick one of your backup lyrics if i took if I, if I snapped one of yours up uh okay backup lyrics okay here's one from the song gram rock Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, your mother's dead. Ah, lovely spread. <laughs> Which is so funny because uh, it makes me picture walking into like a shiva. Do you know what a shiva is? I do, but you know, 
explain it for all the non-Jewish okay, people in the audience. Sure. sure. <laughs> a shiva in the Jewish religion is when somebody dies, the family of that's mourning uh, does something called sitting shiva where they have all the other people. Uh, they have everybody, like all the loved ones and stuff, come in and basically mourn with them mm-hmm. and eat and kind of like celebrate the life. And some versions of Judaism, like some like Orthodox Jews will uh, sit Shiva for like a week. Mm -hmm. But basically it reminds me of like going into like a funeral or a Shiva and just being like, I don't know what to do. Uh, Lovely spread. Yeah. No, I love it so much. It's the first lyric of the song is similar. It's I'm, I just love the way he says it. So I'm sorry. He's like, I'm sorry. Your granddad's dead. Oh, lovely spread. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is this? And it's just, I love it so much. It's also like, it, you've been there before where you've like gone to a funeral or like something of someone you don't know too well. Or, or and you're just like, or someone you don't know. It's like a family member's friend, someone passed away and you mm-hmm. go and you're just like, so sorry that this happened. A good turnout though, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like good show and everyone looks sharp in their suits. Wow, black really flatters everyone. What's the singer of Idol's name? Joe Talbot. Would you want Joe Talbot at your funeral? <laughs> your your like a close relative's funeral of yours? Because I feel like he uh as poetic and brilliant as he can be would walk in very loud. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry your granddad said lovely spread. I'm sorry your granddad said. And he would just come in and be like, oh, mate, <laughs> fucking bullocks that your granddad died. It feels very relatable to me. I feel like that loud person sometimes. So I would appreciate that. Um, so this song is hilarious in the sense that the lyrics are wild. So many insane lyrics. In the beginning of this song, <laughs> He, at some point, he's like, I scored a win, bada bada bing, I'm the king. And then it goes the 10 points to Gryffindor just over and over again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the song ends with him just yelling, my boy fucked Tom Hiddleston's stylist. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was reading about like the meaning of the song. And he's like, he imagines it's like two hedge fund city boys off their face on coke at a funeral. And he's like, they're meathead people. And it's so true. It's like the the to shout at the end of the song, my mate, my boy, fuck Tom Hiddleston stylist is an amazing way to end a song. But also it's like, if you're one of those like hedge fund coked out people, you're like, okay, I like have someone who's vaguely associated to a celebrity who I know who had sex with them. And you're like, hell yeah like i'm the king <laughs> yeah and, yeah that definitely uh reminds me of like wall street guys in new york too who would do something like that i do feel bad for tom hiddleston stylist though you know like because joel Tal- talbot like picked anyone to be like this is funny and i'm not this person but these you don't are who think these- it's true at all you don't think there's any truth to what he's oh no like i've seen like an interview where he's like i hate these type of people and like he's like everything he, like it's funny but like I don't want to analyze it, but you know, he's clearly very much like making a statement about the type of people who say stuff like that. And yet Tom Hiddleston stylist is out there somewhere being like, what the fuck? <laughs> like you threw you out of all the celebrities, I'm you had to pick t- Tom Hiddleston. How many songs do you think Tom Hiddleston stylist is referenced in? And do you think Tom Hiddleston <laughs> is like, dude, again, you're referenced in another song for fucking somebody's mate. Like you got to stop fucking everybody's mate. <laughs> I'm sure t- Tom Hiddleston is just like that much of a, dictator to her stylist i'm also sure like tom hiddleston stylist is like why not benedict cumberbatch's stylist why not like a bad person stylist you know because <laughs> maybe tom hiddleston stylist actually fucks a lot of mates <laughs> jesus all right i i just want to shout out tom hiddleston stylist if you're listening that's not no me harm. that's not me that's andrew i mean you- no harm all right i got Lovely spread I got a lyric. I got a lyric for you. Let me hear. It's from the song Well Done. Which... Well Done. <laughs> oh, do it again. Well Done. Oh, you're so much better at and voices. It, and it, <laughs> all of their songs 
need to have in it at the end of the title because that's how British people talk. In it. <laughs> so this song is great, and I'll just take the lyrics. Why don't you like reggae? Even Tarquin likes reggae. Mm. Mary Berry loves reggae. So why don't you love reggae? I love that you brought this lyric up because this is a common theme in idols of mentioning random fucking people who have, I don't know where these characters come from. I don't know who mm-hmm. they are. Uh, they have the weirdest fucking names. Like Rachel Koo is one of them. Uh, Tar Quinn, Mary Berry. I, I, like, who are they? Why are they here? Uh, tell me about that. So, well, I will tell you about that. But yeah, that is a Tarquin. big... Tarquin is a real person? Tarquin, I think, stands in for like a very posh, like um, privileged person, just in general. So it, uh, this song to me is like, like nagging parents being... Because the rest of the song is like, why don't you get a job, win a medal, get a degree, and like reggae, watch football. Mm-hmm. But just it's fucking amazing. Like the idea of like your parents being like, listen, Lucian or Andrew, because my parents don't nag me, fortunately. But like if they were, you know, if they're like, Lucian, yeah. all your friends are, they love reggae and you don't like reggae. Why? Why? Huh? Huh? Why don't you? Yeah. I mean, you'd be more that's, relevant. For me, that's less my parents doing that. My parents have never done that. It's it's more me in my own head, like especially mm. with like music or movies mm-hmm. like uh, if if my friends all like something and I don't, uh, I definitely get that way in my head. Have, do you get that way sometimes? Like, oh, yeah. Well, well, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, if I don't like this, like, why can't I get into this? And it's not the uh, it's not the stuff that I like. Like, I like what I like, and I'm okay with what I like. It's the stuff that I don't like. Like, for example. Yes. Oh, interesting. Um, like, I, I guess, like, a lot of, like, radio pop music where I'm mm-hmm. just like, well, why can't I? Like, clearly mm-hmm. there's something here. Like, why don't I like Justin Bieber? Everybody fucking loves Bieber. They love- Then you go home and self-flagellate and you're just like, why and don't I, I have get the Biebs? Yeah, <laughs> I do. But have you ever uh, felt that way? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I would say that, uh, well, <laughs> social comparison is one of the most toxic things that you can do. So love yourself, oh, Stieglitz. Fuck off, love mate. yourself. Fuck off. Um, I mean, of course, of course. It's whatever you compare yourself to anyone. It's, to- it's toxic. You don't want to do that. But to answer your question, Mary Berry is one of the hosts of the Great British Bake Off. She's like this old lady who's like very sweet. So it's outing her out in a punk rock. In the, so in this Mary way, Mary, you old fucking twit. I think Mary Barry represents just like, like that calm, older, like British lady who's like privileged, but you know, I just like as she represents like so I'm many idols. Pictures of her. Right <laughs> so many. Oh my god. So many idol songs. I was gonna look at a list of idol songs and just like look at all the name drops, but they fucking name drop. Anyone who's like British and relatively famous, they have name dropped at some point. So, you know, get if if you're in the public eye and you're British, watch out. You're gonna be in an idol song any day She's now. Like the sweetest little old lady. She loves reggae. <laughs> so I feel like she doesn't though. That's the thing. Based speak, on her appearance. Wow white old ladies can't like reggae is that what you're saying uh i'm saying that she probably doesn't really understand the lyrics to like i shot the sheriff Mm -hmm. probably like well blue lives matter (laughs) see and hence why she's in this punk song (laughs) yeah true Although in the UK, the, the cops wear like neon yellow, right? So, <laughs> um, those are my five. Those are my. Five. I get five. I, no, I you have one more left. Um. Okay. I I have a song from Ten Forty Nine Gotho. Uh, which I'm mm-hmm. not sure if that's an address. I tried looking up the address on Google Maps, and it didn't yield any Damn. results. Uh. The line is, she wanted to have sex. I pissed in the kitchen sink as she slowly undressed. And I just thought... We've all been there. This is probably the most <laughs> sensual lyric. Yeah, exactly. We've all been there. I mean, how many times have you been about to have sex with a lady and you just take a quick piss in the kitchen sink? 
what what is the last lyric of this again uh the, well the whole line that she wanted to have sex is i pissed in the kitchen sink as she slowly undressed so she's undressing and he's like quick need to take a quick piss in <laughs> And then he just pees in the kitchen. So you think she's she un- immediately put her clothes on after that? It was like, mm, actually. Do you think she's undressing in the bathroom? And that's why, and she's going so slow that he is just taking care of business in the sink. I think that is a very astute observation, but it's funnier to me for her to be like next to him. This, <laughs> like this they're are- both in the kitchen <laughs> and she's slowly undressing. She's undressing in the kitchen and he just pees. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they walk in yes like, yes cut you know how in the movies there's like a quick cut from the bar to like the foyer of the apartment and they're like undressing yes. each other and they're like it's just like oh they're okay door flies open right they're making out hardcore they start undressing he's taken off her clothes she's taken off his clothes and then he goes wow one second and just does <laughs> just turns and sink he is real quick and then they resume while he's peeing he's just like i just went to my i'm not gonna do the accent i just went to my i can't i can't you can't do accents i'm not allowed to do accents i'm I'm on parole all right uh so so he's like listen my mate i just went to my mate's granddad's funeral uh lovely spread i see pissing in the kitchen sink (laughs) he stops the like fiery hooking up they're they're taking Mm. each other's clothes off. Mm. one second mate need to take a quick piss uh, just went to my granddad's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so this reminds me of, of a story of a friend of mine where uh, his, his roommate was in the bathroom taking too long in the morning. So he went into the kitchen and pooped in a plastic bag. This, is, is this real? This is a real story. It's not me. This isn't like one of those, like a friend of mine. It's me. It's a friend who most likely will be one of the five listeners of this podcast wait what so shout outs to you listening at home wait this is real this is a real story do you want to he, text me the name of the friend so we can keep talking we don't have to cut the podcast i'll just tell you after i, I want to know now i want to picture it we'll cut that okay <laughs> wait, tell me more tell me more please tell me more what so how have i not heard the story before? there's my he has two this well, this, this could potentially go on the pod and we just will bleep out his name. Be It'll be like Norman fucking Rockwell when my Amazon Alexa goes, Norman <laughs> Rockwell. Okay. But right. so, so go, I, my, my friend, uh, he um, had to go to work one day and his roommate was in, it was in the bathroom taking a long time, maybe showering or something. And my friend just was like, oh man, I really got to go. I've got explosive diarrhea. And he took a plastic bag, shat in it, tied it up, threw it out, Washed his hands, went to work. You know, first of all, good for him. Good. That's that. I would not be able to do that. Even if I had hmm. to go so bad, my body was going to explode. I think that I, I couldn't make that work. I I'd be go under those circumstances. I'd be nervous of missing the bag. Well, yeah, that was the other thing I was going to say is. Like, how did he, in all of that, like, emergency explosiveness, how, how did he have the wherewithal to be like, okay, bag goes here, like, pants down here, make sure I don't get anything on, like, the carpet or the floor or anything. And, like, he had, like, the mind to do that. Because if you're hmm. in that much of an emergency that you're shitting in a bag in your kitchen, it, that's hard to, like, picture for me that he had the time to do that. I assume it takes years of uh, of a mindful practice Probably to be calm much. enough to be in such a situation that you could handle it with grace and dignity. Um, he also told me recently that he went running and really had a shit on Fifth Avenue and, and shat on Fifth Avenue about like 8 p.m. in the middle of quarantine. On the sidewalk? On, by like the wall dividing Central Park and, and oh, the wait, sidewalk. Oh, tell me this, but I, 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 I kind of forgot. Some, so He's a big time shitter boy. <laughs> so this is a shout out to my big time shitter boy friend who's <laughs> listening to this. He shat on the <laughs> wall? Yes. And so what, what was the wall? Uh, please tell me it was not somebody's apartment. 
No, no, no. The the wall that divides Central Park and the sidewalk. Oh, I see. Like that medium. Yeah, it's like a, the 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 rock wall. Right, right. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, not the medium. Yes, the rock wall. Wow, yeah. that's intense. First of all, to just be here's the thing. Probably, definitely not the only one to have done that. Definitely no. not the only one to have done no. in that spot. And it's New York City, baby. <laughs> Everything's happened. Yeah, people have done that since. Uh, but also, I could never, ever, ever. No. Could you ever do that? No. I shit outside. I can't shit in, in public at work. I can't <laughs> shit if there's somebody two stalls down from me. Never mind on a fucking wall outside. I I would just be so nervous the whole time. I couldn't do it. Oh yeah, I mean, like like I said, even with a plastic bag in the kitchen, if I had to go that bad, my body would go into toxic shock before it <laughs> came out. Like that's how stubborn my asshole. Your body would consume the poop, and you would. I have a have to go to the ER, and my sphincter would just be like, "No, this is not happening. You will die before we let this come out in the yeah." Ears. Oh man, look at this. Idols. No, on that. <laughs> Idols. That was a great story to end on. Um, do you want to just do some bonus lyrics for fun and see if they work? But yeah. One bonus lyric from Idols. This is for our Patreon fans. <laughs> JK, we have no followers. Um, is from the song Samaritans, which is I'm a real boy, boy, and I cry. I love myself and I want to try. And then later he goes, The mask. A masculinity is a mask, a mask that's wearing me. And my question to you, Andrew Stieglitz, is how do you wear the mask of masculinity? Dude, this is great. And I actually think we could probably put this in, in the real podcast because I, I love this. Uh, I love that song and I love these lines because mm-hmm. I am, and, and I was talking to you about this before, but I, I do not get easily offended by anything at mm-hmm. all ever nothing really mm-hmm. can offend me no joke no even even if you're just yeah. taking shots at me if i know it's in fun it, it doesn't matter what if someone says Phrase? calls you a, a, a walking thyroid i will do amazing poetry i welcome that okay uh but the phrase uh man up well, if somebody tells me to man up and i think it's just like growing up in a very toxic Ma- toxic masculinity environment of Long Island where every <laughs> shots at Long Island where I rap born and raised Hell not me well, but dude. Andrew even <laughs> sorry uh, what was I saying I, I like sorry you were talking about being yeah. in Long Island being, toxic masculinity. Like being, even from a very very young age the like super toxic masculinity of the environment of where I grew up People saying man up in an unironic way to mean like uh, stop crying or like stop mm. being emotional and they say man up, that it makes me fucking enraged. Yeah. It makes me so fucking because it's just like I, I, I have obviously I have traumatic experiences with this. So that's my own thing. So this song like fucking speaks to me. With yeah. That. You know, where it's like, yeah, the mask of masculinity. Like, like, there's nothing more, uh, like, fragile and like unmasculine than somebody who outwardly is mm. uh, trying to persuade people that they're masculine. You know, by it, like going yes. down and being like, "Hey, bro, fucking hey." There's a couple of things that. Are- are interesting to me that men won't do because it's emasculine emas- it emasculates them in their mind one is like wear scarves or like anything in the winter there's like some men that you'll see that like don't wear gloves hats or scarves because they're like i can't be cold like i'm a fucking man and if i I'm- used to live next door <clears throat> to somebody who would shovel their s- shovel snow in shorts oh baby that's and how you know you're like- a real man yeah, that those are the kind of people where I'm like, what is your, what's your fucking problem? Like, mm-hmm. what are you so insecure about that wearing pants is like too Can't pussy pants. for you or too quote unquote? This is not me saying it, but them saying it too quote unquote gay for you. Like, what's your fucking problem? Put on pants. 
Another Stop wearing shorts in the fucking winter, you <laughs> idiot. Another of these things to me is sometimes you see it on, on, on Twitter or Reddit is like men who won't wipe their butts because they're men who won't this wipe their new. butts after pooping or like won't wash their, their ass in the shower because the quote unquote, they think it's gay for a man to wipe his butt. Insane. You see these people sometimes. What? Yeah. <laughs> That is is insane, even by Long Island standards. Yeah. Just to be like, listen, I ain't touching my butt, even if it's to keep myself clean. <laughs> like, I want to have a stinky ass so that... Savage. That is sad. That is... You need to stop being a person existing in society if you're going to act like that. Mm-hmm. You need to stay home and or... Maybe kill yourself. There are so many of those things that are like, men don't do this. Or even what's funny to me is like, when you see like, soap for men. Oh, I <laughs> it's like soap for men or Who like face cream for, for men. What kind of fucking It's always thing? like gray. The color is always gray. And, yeah. and the logos and like the, the, the graphic design always has like screws and bolts. In, in the fucking logo as if like someone's I'll like myself with screwdrivers I work for Dove and normally birds are for women but you know what so we removed the Dove logo and now we just we put a steel plate on this bottle and it's gray and it hurts and it stings you know what I shower with I first of all I go I take shit Okay, and then I take a screwdriver and I just rub oh, it, yeah. a rusty oh, screwdriver, oh, yeah. and I rub it all up on my fucking hairy man chest, and that's how I get clean. I exfoliate. And you're a pussy if you do anything else. <laughs> I exfoliate by taking some sandpaper and just rubbing my face until I bleed. You know how I shower? I play Russian roulette. <laughs> I take a gun, I put it to my head. If I don't die, I guess I'm clean. All right, so one thing we got to do is create, improvise our own li- idols' lyrics. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be hard. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Do you do you have do you have anything in mind? <laughs> let me let me let's take two seconds here. I, I don't think we can leave the people at home waiting because we have the power of editing software. All right. So my version of idols' lyric is. Boris Johnson is a fucking schizoid bloke. I play with Barbie dolls and toke on all this meth. Oh, man. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. I could do better. I could do better, but uh, love yourself. My favorite thing about my mates is they're self-actualized. If anyone came at us, I'd punch them in their thighs. Oh, uh, hold on. Give me an upscale brand. Um, upscale brand is Gucci, yeah. Chanel, Chanel. I thought of that a bit right as you were saying. So their cadence, right? I try and get their cadence down a little bit mm-hmm. when I do this. So mm-hmm. it's very fast, like right. That's like how he does it. So here's what I got. Ready? Uh, let me get the accent. USA. I ain't gay. Gucci Prada every day. USA. Kanye. Hope I'm dead by the end of the day. Fuck you, man. You're too good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. That's like a parody of... It's, like, it's a bad parody. But it's like the, Kanye is the exact type of celebrity he would mention <laughs> yeah, was, to I, represent. I was trying to get a, cele- a, like a country reference, a celebrity reference, and a... Uh, like upscale reference uh joe talbot if you're tired and you need someone to pick up the slack (laughs) call andrew stieglitz he's ready for you so that's it we talked about idols we did a lyrical deep dive stieglitz do you feel exhausted uh to be honest i feel like i'm just getting started you feel like you're just getting started Well, (laughs) I don't know what to say to that. All I can say is that let's take down the Tories and hug 
all immigrants and people who are different than us because idols makes me a loving person let's and put homophobes and coffins let's put homophobes and coffins thank you idols and so anyway follow us on the twitters on the facebooks on the instagrams on the youtubes at the lyric boys We'll be posting our Spotify and Apple playlists of all the songs that you heard today so you can headbang at home. You can email us whatever you want. You can come for us or you can say how nice and hot we look on Zoom. But just email us at lyricboyspod at gmail.com. And most importantly, fucking like, fucking subscribe, fucking leave a review, (laughs) fucking tell your friends. And I'm very cool for just casually (laughs) dropping curse words. And I did. Tell your mates, isn't it? Tell your mates, isn't it? <laughs> Next time you're at a dive bar and you realize that they left their Apple AirPlay on, put us on. And they'll be like, wow, this is kind of annoying. Turn these whiny bitches off. And with that, I wish you a good night. Good night.